Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now, if you would like a more general tutorial in DaVinci Resolve, then be sure to watch this video instead. This video basically just goes over everything in DaVinci Resolve. So, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. The Fusion page is the fourth tab at the bottom. The interface might look a little bit overwhelming. This is where you're going to be adding all of your nodes. And these are basically like the most used nodes that you would use just right here. But there are lots of nodes available here as well. And then in here, in Inspector, this right here is where you would modify a whole bunch of properties in your clip. And then modifiers, I'll get into that later. So you can see I've currently imported a random video. And if I go into the Fusion page while clicking the clip, you may notice that there is a media in and a media out node automatically generated for you. So what the media in is, it's it's basically just the main video clip. You can just drag the video clip in like that. And the media out would be basically the output or the result. And you can do whatever you want in between here. And that's basically what a media in and a media out node is. Media out is the output and then media in is the video input. So now I'm going to be showing you what merge nodes are. Now the merge node has multiple inputs. You can see this is the background input, this is the foreground input, this is the output, and this is the effect mask. And the background is always behind the foreground. If I connect these three nodes like this, you can see in here nothing has changed because I haven't plugged anything into the merge node. This is just the background and then the merge node is just outputting the background to the media out so nothing is happening here. But now if I add stuff to this merge node you can see that there is a change now and if I change the opacity of the merge node you can see I'm basically changing the opacity of the foreground. So almost every property that you change in the merge node will affect only the foreground and not the background. So if I plug in this ellipse node, you can see that this ellipse node only works on the foreground and not on the background. And I'll get into what these nodes are right now. So first of all, the background node. So the background node can basically just be used as a solid layer. So I can change the color of it. I can change it to red, change it to any color. I also can change the type of it. So I can change the types from solid color to four corners gradient. I can give it a horizontal or vertical gradient. Now background nodes are also pretty important. So say you want to start a motion graphic. You can see that there is nothing in here but if I add a background node you can see that now I can add whatever. Or if you want a different background you could make your own background here in the fusion page or you can import your image. Now what a transform node is is that it basically allows you to change the properties of anything that is plugged into it. In this case this background node right here. So hierarchy matters as well. So I move the transform node here and change some stuff here and now everything here is plugged into the transform. So if I move this everything here is going to move. If I add some text which is not plugged into this transform node, then the text is not going to move with the background. So now let's get into what masking nodes are. So you can see I have a fresh fusion composition with the background plugged into the media out. And if I plug another background in here and then make it white, then you can see that this background node is essentially replacing this background node, but I don't want that. I want this white background node to be a certain shape. So you can see there are four main mask types in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This one is the rectangle node. And if I add it, you can see it's it's a basically a rectangle. So now that this rectangle node is plugged into the background node, it is actually turning this background node into a certain shape. You can also plug the rectangle node into this merge node right here and it will just act the same. And in this rectangle node, you can change the width, height, you can invert it, you can uncheck solid and then expand the border width. You can even make the corners round if you want that and may, or make it like that. You can also turn up the soft edge, give it a little bit of that feather. You can also change the corner radius of it. You can also change the angle, so basically the rotation of it. And then the second type of mask is called the ellipse node. And you can basically do everything you did in the rectangle node in this ellipse node right here. So I can change the width and the height, change the angle, expand the border width, soft edge, uncheck solid, then expand border width, make it the outline like this. You can also change the opacity of it as well, which is pretty cool. Now the third type of mask is called the polygon mask. And this basically allows you to draw out whatever mask you want. So let's say I want a star. You can see right here, there's a, my star right there. And I am going to plug into the merge node and you can see that there's my wonderful drawing of the star. And I can do whatever I did here in the other nodes. I can also rotate this in a 3D space, which is kind of cool. You can also invert the mask like that. And the last type of mask is very similar to the polygon mask, except it actually allows you to make splines like this. 
so you can see that this is what the mask shape is but this is what the mask actually looks like which can be pretty useful if you want to create some weird shapes like this so yeah those are the types of masks so now i'm going to be showing you guys the text plus node so you can see here i can drag the text plus node like this and then drag it over in the blue right here and i can let go and then it automatically creates the merge node for you it also adds the text node and then i can add whatever i want in here now this text node right here is really customizable. It's more customizable than the default text plus node even in here. So in here you can type whatever you want. You can also change the font, change it to the font that I use all the time. You can also change all of this stuff. So tracking is the space between the letters and then line spacing is the spacing between the lines. And there's also a write on effect which allows you to hide certain parts of the text that you added. You can actually have sort of a typewriter in effect like this. You can also customize the text by going into layout, changing certain properties of the text. So you can see I can rotate this text in the 3D space, which is pretty cool. You can also go into transform and then rotate the individual characters in the text like this. So you can change the X value to make it sort of like an italic font like this. You can also go into shading and the first element is already done. It's called the white solid fill which is basically the fill of the text and you can also add other elements and the name's already filled in for you but if you want to change the name to blue outline then you can do that you can change it to a blue outline and then you can change the different properties of the text so you can change the join style so if you don't want it to be rounded corners you can set this to miter and then now it's gonna be sharp corners more similar to premiere pro and you can just change so many things in here you can even make the outline of the text a gradient which is pretty cool now a common bug with this is that this blending is set to composite so it's gonna intersect and be weird looking like this but you guys set the blend blending to either transparent or solids so that it actually acts normally like this. Those are the different shading elements in uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So now I'm going to be showing you guys what instance nodes are. So creating an instance node is similar to copy and pasting a node, except for the fact that the only difference is that with normal copy and pasting, you can actually control each node separately. But if you create an instance of the same node, the settings that you change in this node will also apply to this node as well. You can also de-instance certain parts of the node if you don't want a certain part of the node to change what the instance wants. So to show you, I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste an instance. You can also do Control shift v And now you can see there's a line here and all of these properties will remain the same as the properties in here. So you can see I've added a transform node. So now these two text nodes are different, but you can see when I control the text in this one, it automatically changes in the instance node here. So if you don't want certain parts of the text to be instanced, you could also de-instance certain parts. I'm gonna de-instance all of these things right here. And you can see now I can control this separately from the main text nodes. Now this text node is going to be like this, while well, this text node is going to be different, but these controls still stay the same. So now I'm going to be showing you effect nodes. So there are lots of nodes in here. There are also lots of effects in this effect area of the normal edit pages. Now what if I told you that all of these effects and more are actually available in Fusion? So let's say you want a camera shake effect. You can actually add a camera shake effect in the fusion page as well. And you can see it works just like normal. So this camera shake right here is actually not the same as this camera shake. The one in open effects is the one that you'll find in here, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, I basically just explained 90% of the effects in fusion. So now I'm going to be telling you about keyframes and splines. So you can see that I've set up something here and we just add a transform node real quick. So to animate, obviously it's pretty simple. Starting at frame 30, I'm going to move the center here. Make sure I add the keyframe. And then in frame 60, I'm going to add another keyframe and then change the X to this side. So now you can see that the animation looks pretty basic. So to fix that, first off, the main thing that you got to do is go into settings and then check motion blur and now you can see it adds a little bit of motion blur so motion blur does happen in real life it's the way our eyes work now i'm going to introduce you to another menu called the spline menu so in this spline menu here basically what you can do is tweak the keyframes to make them exactly how you want it so first i'm going to go up here to these three dots and then show only selected tool so if you have a lot of nodes with a lot of keyframes and you have a lot of things here this can really help narrow it down so it's only the ones that are selected so I'm going to select this and then hit zoom to fit so that it's better. And then I'm going to select these keyframes. And you can tell by this line 
this basically represents the velocity of this circle here. So you can see it moves at a pretty steady pace throughout the whole thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend this like this and then bring this down like this. So imagine this is its starting destination and this is its ending destination. So you can see it remains pretty close to the starting de destination right up until the end where it stops really really quickly at its end destination. And the resulting animation is this. It basically stops and then snaps to the end. You could also have it go the other way. It snaps from its starting position and then eases into its ending position like that. You can also do some pretty fancy ease in and out like this. So if you're wondering how those YouTubers do those very very silky smooth animations, this is how they do it. Just like that. So now let's merge everything we've learned. So this is a background node right here and I'm gonna make it red and you can see background is plugged into the foreground. This background is plugged into the background and I'm gonna add this rectangle node right here. Make it a certain shape. I'm gonna change this to a certain color and I'm also gonna uncheck solid and then increase the border width. So now it has that like really modern design. I'm actually also gonna copy paste this like this and then I'm gonna check solid and I'm actually gonna make this color just a plain white and then the merge node I'm gonna turn the blend mode down a little bit. So now if I put a color bar on the back, you can see that the more you turn up this blend, the more opaque the white background is. And then I'm gonna add, and now I'm gonna add some text. So you can just add some text by just clicking and dragging this text node here. And then I'm just gonna add subscribe in all caps. And I'm gonna set the font to a very stretched font. And you can see I can use the shading right here and I can add a red outline. I can also change the appearance to this, make this black, and then turn up the softness. So now I have a little bit of a shadow. I can also change the offset a little bit. I'm gonna bring this media out node a little bit more like this. And I'm gonna add a transform node. And I'm gonna animate it in like this. So I'm gonna add a keyframe right there, frame 20. Go back to frame zero and then move that like this. I'm also gonna remove the color bar and replace it with a transparent background node. So now you can see that this subscribe right here actually just slides in like this. And now I can turn on motion blur, give it that nice natural motion look to it. And also go into spline. Make sure it's only selected tool selected. Check transform, zoom to fit, select like this. And I'm actually gonna make the animation start fast and slow down just like this. Now you can see if I set the quality of my motion blur too low, it's not gonna look very good. But the higher the quality is, the more refined the motion blur is gonna look. You can also turn down the shutter angle to try to remedy some of that glitchiness. So now here you can see I've made a wonderful animation like this. Now there's one last thing I have yet to show you and that is text plus modifiers. So here's a cool and easy one for you to use. You can actually right click and then select text timer and then that basically automatically creates a one minute timer and then you can go up to modifiers and then you can change it by the amount of hours minutes seconds you can also click the time code one and then that basically makes the time code which counts up like sort of like a stopwatch and it's also frame specific so if there's 24 frames in your video it's going to count up until 23 by until eventually resetting to four another cool thing you can do you can also do character level styling so now if you go up here to modify and then select the text. You can actually change the different properties of, of the text individually. So you can see here's yellow text and then here you can see I can make it blue. Blue text right there and then I can also select this text and then make it red. So yeah now it's character specific. I can also change the font all in one text plus node which is pretty cool. Okay finally finished my 47 tutorial color grading. Let's see how the video looks. Well, that looks terrible. We finally learned how to color grade again. Yep, it's not going well at all. Wait, that video looks terrible. Well, I mean, it's all part of the learning process. I mean, you do know that there are plugins that can help you with that. Really? Like, I mean, really good plugins such as like Dehancer. You can actually get that film look pretty easily and using it also allows you to add many filmic effects like film grain, halation, and more using the Dehancer plugin. The plugin is also available using many different video editing programs. So, you know, try it out at like 10% off using the link in the description. Wow, thanks. Alright, try out the plugin. Yeah, the plugin's actually it's actually pretty powerful. I just have to make sure I'm correcting the original clip first, just so I can get the best results. Well that's great, see you around. So yeah, I really really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial video. If you would like a more advanced tutorial, I would recommend checking this video up here. And I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Bye!
I've been grinding in the shadows, man. I've been on the grind, but it feels like every time I'm just falling behind. I try so hard, get my all, but it's like I'm cursed. No matter what I do, success, it feels so far, it hurts. I'm putting in the hours, chasing dreams with all my might. But success is playing hide and seek, it just feels out of sight. I'm reaching for the stars, but they're way too far away. I'm stuck in this cycle, it feels like I have no say.